Earlier today, I was troubleshooting a problem on my car here uh, with a faulty temp temperature gauge. You know, I was getting no reading on my engine temperature, and I thought I'd go ahead and check the fuse. Well, when I opened the fuse box, you know, I checked the fuse for the instrument cluster, and it was fine, but I happened to spot another fuse that was burned out. It was, it was literally just almost like it was broken. I didn't see a lot of burn marks on the, uh, the fuse holder itself, but I thought, well, maybe it was just a fatigued fuse. So I stuck another fuse in, turned the key on, immediately blew. So, I mean, that's a classic example of a, of a short. You know, something is shorting to ground in the car and immediate, we're not even talking about a delay here, we're talking about immediate blowing of the fuse. And if that should happen to you, uh, what, what are you going to do? I mean, I, I've got to troubleshoot the problem and I thought, hey, this is a, a great opportunity to just share with you a couple tips on what I do when I proceed to isolate a short in my electrical system. This happens to a lot of us, happens to a lot of older cars as, as electrical components age. So when this happens, the first thing you want to do is get that old fuse box cover and check the chart inside. I hope yours has one. But what I'm doing is I'm going to look, the fuse that was blowing was fuse number 15. So I'm going to read what 15 controls. Roof light rear, trunk light, safety belt, handover arm, switch over valve, central locking system, door lights, reading lamps, automatic antenna and memory adjustment for the seat memory. So there's quite a few things in there that, that could be causing the problem but you know I know it's generally two or three that are consistently a problem with blown fuses and one of them is that pump motor back there for the central locking system in the trunk and that, you know, because of the high moisture environment it sits in when you start having leaks of water into your trunk on these 126 chassis, that's a problem waiting to happen. So, you know, that's one thing. I also know that dome lights, automatic dome lights can cause problems. They can short out. And I've had experience with switches in the doors or switches in the trunk. So what you have to do when this happens is you have to start unplugging things. That's right. You take one thing at a time, you unplug it, and then you're going to need an assortment of fuses. There's some other electrical equipment you could have, but for most DIY mechanics, just get a bunch of fuses. You're going to blow them. You know, you might go through three or four. So what I decided to do, let's go after that central locking system. So I opened the trunk and unplugged it. Just unplug the the electrical pump back there that drives the vacuum for the door locks. Then I turned the key on, came back up here, inserted the fuse, and bang, still blew. So I thought, okay, the next thing I've had a lot of problems with is the, is the trunk switch and the trunk light. So I just totally unplugged that. Uh, once again, you plug the, the vacuum back in and you do one at a time. I went, I unplugged the trunk light, came back and flew, uh, okay, number of fuse, number two is gone, wasted two more fuses. So then I thought, well, let's go after the dome light because that's pretty common. You know, that front dome light with the automatic off uh, function, that can short internally and cause the fuse to blow. So I, I popped that down, unplugged the, the dome light, came back in, put another fuse in, the key on, bang, that fuse blew. So by this time, I was getting a little discouraged. This was a little bit earlier this afternoon. I thought, you know, I probably should have filmed this while I was doing it, but since I already did it, I, I can only just come on and kind of share with you what the results were. But finally, I said, okay, let's go after the power antenna. And I went back into the trunk. I unplugged the plug going, you know, you have to pop that panel out, get up in there and unplug the plug that goes into the power antenna. Turn the key on, came up here, put the fuse in. Fine. So, I haven't fixed the problem yet because I got to go, you know, probably find another power antenna. But at least I can drive the car now without blowing fuses. You know, the power antenna is not that critical. But I know that's a problem. And once I get a replacement power antenna, 
I probably don't have to worry about blowing fuse number 15 again.